Well, good uh, morning to those who have joined us, and uh, thanks for taking a bit of time out of your Thursday morning to hear from us in the Innovation Lab in Belfast, and uh, to allow us to share some of the work that we have been doing over the past six months to gather uh, information from fellow Northern Ireland civil servants on their experience of working during the, the pandemic. Uh, so what we've done is we've conducted some research and uh, we've, we've based that on a quantitative, uh, not quantitative, but qualitative research and uh, we wanted to get into the heart of this. We'll develop that a little bit in a moment or two. Uh, when others, my colleagues, speak. So with me this morning, I've got Martin Morgan, and I've got Tony Young from the Innovation Lab. Uh, I'm sure like you, uh, we look back on last year with shock and awe and amazement, and with a great deal of sadness to you, all that has transpired. And uh, in fact, uh, last year, uh, Tony and Martin were in a, a conference in Edinburgh uh, at, at this time, and they came back, and there'd been a report that someone at the conference had contracted COVID and that was sort of the, the first real sense that this was something big and going to come our way and when that happened we didn't know what to do so I suggested that that, that the both of them went and we just worked from home for a bit uh, and then about a fortnight later we were all working from home and we were into a world that we never anticipated being in, uh, coping with new circumstances and facing new pressures and so forth and we felt in the past year that it would be good to capture some of the experience and the learning from that so that we could translate it into, um, into insights and therefore inform policy about how we might work forward into the future. So we spent quite a bit of time over the past year just gathering that information together and we're going to share something of the learning from that with you this morning. Uh, the real predominance of the presentation, which will be about 15, 20 minutes most, is around the technology we used because after all this is about digital insights and we'll go from there. So uh, thank you very much and I'm going to pass to Martin. Thanks Malcolm for, for the introduction. Good morning everyone. Um, my name is Martin and I am a service designer in the Northern Ireland Innovation Lab. Uh, this morning I'm just going to talk through the early initial phase of the, the project that we have undertaken about working during the pandemic. Uh, really this started in for us in early May last year after we had read a, a, a blog from Ian Burbage from the Royal Society of Arts and Manufacturing around Future Change Framework. And that really pointed to the need uh, to understand the impacts of the pandemic uh, on people. And for us, those people were the Northern Ireland civil servants that work in the organisation. The Innovation Lab at its heart, its ethos is user-centered, user-centered design, user-centered policies. Uh, so for us, it was important to try and set the wheels in motion to capture the experiences of staff. Uh, at the outset, we had discussions about how we would do this. Uh, I'm sure as all public sector uh, staff are aware, there are quantitative surveys issued annually there is in Northern Ireland to capture uh, staff surveys and the flavour of how people are interacting with the with the organisation annually and that provides a real evidence base uh, statistically on how um, how people feel around um, satisfied dissatisfied. We but we felt that to capture the experiences and the lived experiences of staff working during the pandemic, we wanted to get in at a, at a more deeper level, in at an emotional level, and we discussed using a qualitative approach, and a qualitative approach basically gets in to hear the user's story, to let them share their experiences so we can explore those experiences and emotions. Um, we then set about, having agreed that, we set about looking at the type of questions that we would ask that would elicit those types of responses. Um, uh, on the next slide, you will see, I'm, I'm gonna go through a couple of examples here of the questions that we designed uh, to try and elicit those examples. So we initially started out using five, asking for five things that had um, represented working during the pandemic for staff. Within the Innovation Lab, we are quite fortunate. We have a broad skill set. We have sociologists, behavioural scientists, psychology um, backgrounds and statisticians. And 
we were able to use all of those skills to understand how we should develop questions to elicit those deeper responses and get down into different subsets or layers of people's thinking. So initially we start out asking for the five things that come to mind. The next slide will show that the software that we used enabled us to, to allow people to free text type the answers. I'll come back to that shortly. Um, at the end of the first question, we represented the five things, which is on the next slide, that people had answered. But we asked them now from those five, pick out the three that had the greatest impact for them. Again, the next slide shows that continually through this, we are representing the, the, the re response answers to them. This was part of a test and iterative process that we used with friends, families and colleagues. We, we probably tested this, I would say, between six, six to eight times to get this right. Um, and the software allowed us to do this, but we'll come back to that. I'll come back to that shortly and how it did that. Um, so by representing the data, it enabled people to fill to, to use the same words without having to guess themselves or second guess themselves. The next slide then shows um, another tool that we used within um, the, the question design, which was pictures. Um, this slide represents um, how Typeform was the software that we used. Typeform enabled us to design uh, a user-friendly and welcoming survey. Uh, we were able to put our own pictures in. We were able to, to, to use the backgrounds and colors. Typeform, um, we use Typeform based on experience within the lab. One of, we were, one of the researchers within the lab had previously conducted a qualitative survey and used Typeform as their method of approach. Um, I don't think anyone else in the lab had experience of using that. We had used other tools before, but when we were talking about the question type and question development and how we wanted to structure it, the logic and functionality within the Typeform software provided us with the tools that we needed to get the responses and the level of detail that we wanted. This, uh, this slide talks about a picture. I'm sure you're all aware that a picture sometimes paints a thousand words, but we all have experiences of where we have looked at a picture from a, a, a wedding or a, a, a large event or a holiday and it automatically takes you back to that time and place and the sounds and the smells and the emotions of that moment in time. And that's what we were trying to do with these pictures where we asked people to represent a positive aspect and a negative aspect. Um, the next slide shows another thing that came out through the test uh, phase is that depending on, on the platform that you were using, a mobile phone or a tablet or a PC, would depend how you interact with this software. So it enabled us to use a broad um, broad range of devices for people to complete the, the, the survey, which was excellent. We just had to outline it here. The other thing about um, Typeform that was really useful is we could embed a link to a free picture um, uh, website uh, that staff, if they didn't want to upload their own picture, they could upload a picture from that website, which was great. Uh, one other thing about this survey is none of the questions are mandatory. Um, you know, the staff could go through this without um, having to complete it and they could move on. I'll show you later how they could do that. Um, so Malcolm, if we move on to the next slide then, we then have the picture in and we then, the software enables us then to add this at the bottom to enable them to give us their understanding and explanation of how this was done. So. The next slide, I think, is a representation of how the survey looked on a mobile phone, for example. Uh, I've put up the, the first slide, the picture slide, and the last slide to just give you a sense of how the software makes it look inviting. We were able to pick our own pictures and insert our own pictures and text around that. Um, at the outset of the work, um, we wanted to get around 50 responses from each department. There are nine departments within the Northern Ireland Civil Service. 50 responses for a quality of survey is quite large, but we felt we needed to try and achieve that number to get a diverse range of grade, uh, gender and working locations to really give us the deep insights that we needed. Uh, 
at the end of the survey, we, we built a survey for each department so we could monitor that. So we had nine individual surveys. And at the end of that process, we had 468 responses received, which populated around about 8,000 um, individual responses that we needed to analyze. So the other, another positive aspect of Typeform is how it enabled us to download the results. Uh, the results are captured uh, on the online Typeform um, platform, and we can download it via uh, Excel spreadsheet, as this slide shows. Um, the ability to download it on the Excel spreadsheet for us was a real benefit because the collaborative whiteboard that Tony's going to talk about shortly that we were integrating or doing the analysis on, we were able to integrate this with it so that when we downloaded the, the survey on a CSV file, we could filter that file by grade. So we went across the different grades, so it grouped all the grades, and then we could select the data in the cells and transfer it into the, to the whiteboard. Uh, and how that happened, it transformed the actual value in the cell or the response in the cell, and it turned it into a post-it, as this next slide will show. This is how it landed in the collaborative whiteboard. Um, I think overall Typeform allowed us to, to use logic and functionality that really helped us uh, to get the, 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 the types of questions asked and elicit the responses that we really wanted. So it was a really valuable resource in this, in this project. Uh, I'm going to hand over now to Tony to talk about how the analysis took place um, and if we have any questions at the end, happy to take them. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Uh, good morning, everyone. So, yeah, firstly, I want to introduce you to Miro. Uh, it's a collaborative online uh, tool that uh, we only started using last year ourselves again. Um, it allows for real-time interactive working, and when using it in this project, we did so in conjunction with WebEx to allow us to chat as we analyze the data in the survey. Uh, as you can see here, Miro has transformed each cell Martin talked about uh, into yellow post-its, and this represents about two-thirds of a department's comments. So you can see the volume we were dealing with. Um, you will notice a few blank spaces. Uh, these are where respondents didn't answer questions, and as Martin said, they didn't have to. And also earlier, he talked about uh, the, the images and photographs that could be uh, uploaded. Well, th these, these aren't obvious there because they have to be downloaded separately. As researchers, we wanted to keep track of our respondents and identify certain things uh, about them to support our findings. This meant that we coded the comments to allow us to identify insights for grade, gender, and uh, work location. And here on the left, you can see we use colors, for instance, to um, to identify grades, uh, and if you move on now, Malcolm, then you can see on the next next slide that uh, we also use small tags to identify gender, etc., and whether or not the respondent was happy to um, share their comments. For example, the green posted here is from an executive officer grade, uh, whilst the white one uh, is a grade six or seven uh, in the Northern Ireland Civil Service. So the next slide then. Uh, this shows uh, what a coded department looks like whenever we have all that, that data uh, coded. Um, and the next stage for, for, for this is to take the comments uh, for one of the questions and sort it into our themes. So that takes us to our next slide. And here we've moved the, co the, the appropriate set of colored post-its into the center of the, of the theme framework we developed. Um, so these, these lines above and below uh, the block of post-its in the middle are the, the 35 themes that we, we split our, our, our content into. Uh, and the next slide then zooms into one of these themes, which is ways of working. You can see here the this is what we call a Miro card, and it contains a theme name and then the definition of what the theme is. Uh, you'll also see that we've put labels of positive and negative so that we can sort of assess the comments and, and, and put them on the appropriate side of, the, of, of that theme. Um, it's worth noting that we created, as, as Martin said, a board per department, uh, and that's nine boards within, uh, and within that then there were five templates uh, on the separate questions. So this meant that we probably 
did the sorting process maybe up to 40 times. So in summary, if we move to the next one, Malcolm, we took the post-its you can see in the middle and it should, if you click forward, show what it looks like once it's been themed. So that that's 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 a question of a department themed into uh, all the post-its themes into our, our, our theme framework. Um, so if we move on then, again, we can zoom into the ways of working theme and uh, so that you can see what we were dealing with on each post-it. And the same three po uh, same three researchers worked on all of this. So that was myself, Martin, and Neil, who I think is, is, is in the audience, um, mapped every comment we received. A discussion uh, on the content of the comment was held prior to it being moved to a particular theme or themes. And this helped us to clarify our understanding of the comments made, identify the theme or themes it related to, and reduce the impact of our own personal personal bias on the findings. Uh, this was very time consuming. However, we believe that the benefits derived resulted in an improved integrity of our analysis. And then I think my final slide is, is this one here, which is looking at the insights. So from here, we looked at the comments mapped for each individual theme. Uh, to begin developing insight statements. Uh, in this example, again, we're, we're staying with ways of working and each of the stars here represents a subtopic in that theme that we identified from the comments we got. Uh, we then spent time considering these and where appropriate drew out insights. These are represented by the larger post-its on the left-hand side of this slide. Uh, so yeah, as stated before, the three of us uh, were doing this day in, day out for approximately four months to get all of the, the detail uh, to this stage and, and also to bring out a, a load of other things. So uh, this has delivered a, an abundance of research findings for the Innovation Lab and the Northern Ireland Civil Service with more than 570 insights as well as a number of other products that will be in our final report. Uh, Malcolm will now quickly take you through the high level outcomes of this work. Thanks everyone. Thanks, uh, uh, Tony, for that. Uh, th these, the guys have uh, invested tremendously in this uh, work and the, what I'm showing you now are the seven very high level um, recommendations or topics that came through the big things for us. There are other tools that have come out of this. Um, one of them, for example, and I'll just talk about it very briefly, which really impresses me, is that whenever you look at the positive and the negative uh, aspects of a particular theme, you begin to then, you can analyse that further and you can begin to map to the positive those things that promoted the positivity. And again, to the negative comments, you can begin to map to that the things that probably led to those comments being negative. And you, the, the, all of a sudden you're presented with like a toolbox or a gearbox. Uh, and you can see, well, those are the positive, that, that's what led to positivity. So let's emphasize some of that. Uh, and that's what led to negativity. Uh, and can we mitigate or reduce some of those? So it's, it's a fascinating piece of work. And we're just really beginning to see the wealth of material and the tools uh, that have come out of this. So very rapidly going through the seven recommendations or the seven high level topics and they're over the next two slides. Uh, fully flexible working. This really allies itself the direction the Northern Ireland Civil Service is taking at the minute. Uh, and what we have uh, done is provided a, 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 a rich source of user-based insights to inform policy development around uh, fully flexible working. Because uh, again, as Martin alluded to at the start of this, the Innovation Lab, our, our ethos in the Innovation Lab is, is designing services, uh, whether it's for the public or for employees, that is embedded in the needs and the experience of employees or the public. And in this case, we have these insights, which have been driven by the lived experience and the personal reporting of all of those civil servants who responded to our uh, our uh, survey. Leadership style came through uh, very much and again uh, one of the key themes here was that there were pockets where perhaps mm -hmm. managers should uh, be able to uh, think outside of the box and, um, uh, and uh, be more trusting uh, of their staff and also what came through here was the need for emotional awareness uh, or uh, emotional um, intelligence 
to be uh, on greater display and in, in, in managers in certain places and certain uh, pockets of of the civil service. Interestingly too, what came through very clearly was the different um, cultures of the different departments uh, and that could be seen very clearly in the in the responses that we got. Um, and also which was very evident on self and, and only to be expected was that in certain departments staff were under considerable pressure, which was only right or not only right, but only to be expected because they really were at the forefront of leading the charge to address the pandemic. Staying connected, a lot of things came through there about the adequacy of uh, how we organise ourselves, how we stay in touch in a situation where so many people are working from home uh, and ways in which those arrangements can be significantly improved and strengthened. Uh, again, we're in uncharted territory here as, as a large organisation and the learning from this has been significant and will be significant going forward. Uh, quickly over the page, stepping through here, um, staff integration, that really uh, gets down to the, the need and the extra work that needs to be done to ensure new people are integrated into the work team, particularly where that work team is dispersed. Uh, that has That is something that really, really does need to be thought about. Uh, we all know what it's like to start a new job somewhere. You can imagine what it must be like to be starting a new job when some of the people that you're working with, you've never met them before or, or you've met them virtually, but you haven't actually been uh, together with them. Overall well-being came through and a lot of work has been done and continues to be done and more could be done around uh, the organisation policies and physical and mental well-being uh, and supporting staff. The penultimate one then, the provision of equipment, it became very clear at the very early days of the pandemic that uh, there were people who were, were, had to go home and work from home, but they didn't have the equipment to do that. And I know that very rapidly our colleagues in the Northern Ireland Civil Service IT services have really stepped up and a lot of the vast majority of that has been addressed. But there's more that could be done uh, as people begin to uh, see how they can successfully work uh, from the home environment. And then the biggest, I think the biggest thing for me was uh, the, the <coughs> outages in, in commuting uh, and the, the way in which now people have actually seen that this can work and I can work from home successfully and I can deliver the outcomes that are asked of me uh, and uh, I'll come to the next slide there and you can see that that has now moved forward uh, and we now have this evidence base which has supported uh, a lot of the work that's going forward in the Northern Ireland Civil Service and has helped to inform the recent announcements made by our Minister about the creation of Connect2 hubs. Those are hubs that will be dispersed around Northern Ireland where staff working from home can go in and can have the different uh, techni additional technical uh, facilities uh, and, the, and the, the space to work uh, when they, they, they need to. And we're very pleased that uh, what we have done by way of this survey has informed that to some degree and has supported that, that direction of travel. Also the working from home policy is being developed further and uh, our research uh, will very, very uh, strongly uh, provide evidence into that from the experience of staff. And shortly we will publish the report of our, our findings and uh, it will look something like that. Uh, and uh, once this report is certainly be available for anybody who wants to have a copy of it. So uh, we have about six minutes, just under six minutes left. Uh, that's a quick canter through. We've uh, laboured much on the IT side of this. After all, this is a digital event uh, to show that we've used two forms of, uh, of digital enabling. Uh, we've also, we've actually used three because we've had Typeform, we've had Miro board, and we've heavily relied on WebEx. Uh, for our, our staff teams to work remotely but work together and all of the work that you're seeing today has been done uh, by the three individuals who have laboured hard and long uh, in their own homes and have worked over the, the digital um, service called Webex. So thank you very much. I'm very happy to take some questions now. I'm sorry I'm making up to that. We've about five minutes left so please fire any questions. I'm happy to take them. Thank you. Uh, maybe just to, to, to get the, the juices going, uh, Martin, would you like to say something about uh, how we procured these, uh, the, these, the software we've been using here? 
So yeah, the, the, the procurement process within the Northern Ireland Civil Service, I'm sure it's similar across across all government organisations, uh, requires business case procurement. Um, so this would be the normal business case process. The additional steps around, particularly Miro, um, involve discussions with um, IT security officers and data protection officers. Um, the Miro software package had not been used in the Northern Ireland Civil Service before we had uh, approached for requests to use it in April, May last year. Malcolm talked earlier about the event in Edinburgh. Uh, Tony and myself were fortunate to be at the Service Design and Government event last year, and we actually there was a demonstration of Miro given at that event, and it was that that triggered our interest in the software. Um, and we were able to set up personal accounts um, to test the software. It allows you three free collaborative whiteboards to test the functionality in it. So Tony and myself had undertaken on our own accord to investigate the software. We had done that and therefore we were able to um, explain to the AT security officer how it worked and we went through a number of discussions with them and the data protection officer to give us the required um, permissions to get licenses for the software. Uh, thanks, Martin. And uh, the, the the privacy issues were important as well. We talked to the our local IT security people, uh, and then uh, I don't say something about the an anonymity of the surveys and the well, yeah, the, the, all the data within the Miro boards is completely anonymous. Um, the survey was was conducted for anonymity purposes. We do have a demographic data, which will be grade, gender, etc. But we. We, we, we haven't transferred any uh, identifying data as in names or email addresses into the Miro boards. And as Tony touched on earlier, we asked expressly if we could have permission to share photographs and quotes within the survey. And we have only used those within the reports uh, moving forward to respect the, the user's requests. Thank you very much. Um... Maybe Tony, I don't want to land you on it, but um, uh, the, 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 this was very labour intensive. Do you think there would be, is there software that could have done this for us, do you reckon? Um, well, I have to say, we're, we're not aware of there being software that it could have done what we did manually. Um, some some members of the lab have, have come across software before that would pick out keywords and, and phrases, uh, but I don't think you would get the, the full understanding that we got from doing it manually. So, um, in short, we're not aware of it, uh, but if anybody could highlight something to us, maybe we could investigate that or use it in the future. Thanks, Tony. Um, so thank you. If anyone is interested in, in seeing the final the final report, it, it, keep an eye on the ILAB Twitter account or drop us an email. The email address is up on the final slide there and we'll add you to the distribution list. Uh, and again, we're happy to happy to talk about it. We've spent long enough trying to, trying to analyse it and get the data from it. So if, if if anyone has any questions or wants to talk about it, I think we'll be more than keen to, to share our thinking on it. Okay. Well, look, <clears throat> thank, thanks very much, everybody. That's uh, uh, We're just about to half hour now, so appreciate everybody those who have joined us. Uh, and i um, happy, to, happy to provide you with a copy of the report as and when it's published. So thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you.